and welcome back to my channel and if you are new here please press the subscription button and notification bell because I post frequent videos and today in this video I'm going to be discussing something really tragic that happened on the 13th of April 2021 just a few days ago on Wednesday an African sister in diaspora a sister from Cameroon was found dead in her house in Arizona in America. A friend found her and alerted the police. And the police was called to come and carry the body. Let's just look at that video. about this is that Gladys Mopeka was just not killed by anyone but by her own 29 year old son Tabu Mopeka so just look at that a child a mother carried in her womb for nine months raised cherished and loved and I've done a video about this a few weeks ago when children abuse their parents in which i highlighted how this abuse starts even when they were children but because most mothers are ashamed to talk about it and they don't know how to handle it these children grow up abusing their parents and eventually might even end up killing their parents like in this tragic case <laughs> who would believe that a child can shoot his own mother and he shot her several times not just once he shot her several times honestly the matataya meal this case is so scary but it's something we really have to deal with too because this is the reality of life. And I tried to look at Gladys' life. What kind of woman was she? This was a 56-year-old teacher with a master's degree. She was teaching in a primary school and in a middle school. So she was a very educated woman. And her husband was even an assistant professor in a university in Pennsylvania. So I dug further and I found out that this is a woman that came from Cameroon to settle in America. But you know what, people? She had a lot of issues in America. Because I saw that she had real problems in her job. The school was discriminating on her. Although she was a very good English teacher, they said she was speaking with an accent. 
She even tried, took lessons to speak with an American accent. They said it was not enough. They gave her a lot of workload, kept assessing her differently, giving her poor assessments. In fact, they even accused her that she tried to drag a child out of a car because they were meant to welcome the nursery school children when they come to school. And parents didn't even want her to touch the child because they said they didn't want her touching their child, a black woman. So you see, with all this pressure of racism, this poor woman lost her job and had to battle for years in the court before she was given her job back. The racial system in America made it very difficult for her to cope. So she had her own battles she was fighting there. And when you find a lot of battles, it's very difficult to cope with your children. I can imagine too that after all these problems she went through, having a child like that, because that boy must have been showing his character from young, she would have even been scared to come out openly and say, my son has issues. Because she'll be scared that anything she brings up will be used against her. And they'll say, yeah, you can't even train your own child, but you want to be a teacher for our kids. So that would have kept her silent and kept her to hide that shame to herself. I spoke about these things in the video I made. Go back and check my video. When children abuse their parents, how the parents hide away in shame. Tribute her son made to her. I never knew yesterday would be a day that would change my life forever. I never knew when we spoke this past weekend, it would be the last time I got to hear I love you. I know what it means to feel powerless. That's why I trained in the gym every day. And you'd ask, which kind of gym is this that you say you go to every day? would laugh and I'd just say, so I'm better at sports. In reality, deep down, it was so I could protect my family. It was so none of us would have to feel powerless at the hands of this that would do us harm. In the end, distance was my enemy. You see how pathetic. This child had been taking lessons to try and protect himself and family because the abuse had been going on for years. And not just the mother, but the whole family was suffering from the abuse. Another thing that struck my attention was that her two children have made a GoFundMe appeal, looking for funds to help them with their mother. They need funds to even just fly from Philadelphia to Arizona because it's a murder case and the police is involved. The house has to be cleared up eventually. And they say they don't have money. Meanwhile, they say that their father is an assistant professor. Even in the tribute the boy made, he said that distance was a problem. So this is a family. The mother is doing well academically working. The father is doing brilliantly well academically working. But within the family, there is a child having an issue. Please, I'm not trying to blame the parents. But I'm trying to show that abuse can happen in any home. It doesn't depend on how well educated the parents are or how rich. But the fact remains that this home was dysfunctional. The parents were living apart. The, child, the other two children were living with the father. Somehow, this boy that killed his mother, Tabu, was living with his mother. We really have to learn out of this case for those of us living in diaspora. Because sometimes 
We come here, we feel we want to be somebody, we want to make it, we want to make money, we have to build our houses at home. Everybody is hustling their own hustle here and there. But somewhere along the line, children get lost. Don't think that because it works for family A, it can work for your own family. Something may work for this family, it cannot work for your own family because your whole situation is different. Your own children may be different. You may have a child that is challenged, a child that needs extra care and attention. So please, when we come here, we're hustling the hustle. Let us remember that if we have to pay with our life or everything we're hustling for, our children get lost in the process, then we have lost everything. The most important thing is to raise our children well, to be there for our children, to have time for the children. Yes, the money is important. You need to pay rent and everything. But the children need quality time with us. We need to be involved in them, involved in what they are doing, in what they are doing at school, not just teaching them, but to support them when they fail. Children need us most when they fail, when they are having problems. We have to be there for them and show them, yes, you have a future. If this child now that killed his mother at age 29, at that old age at home, if this child was a struggling child or a child on drugs, or a child with mental issues. He would have needed help. Two such educated parents should have found a way of seeking help for that child. And still again, I'm not blaming them. Sometimes you try everything and it doesn't work. And that's why I said in my video I made on children abusing their parents. When it gets to a stage that you can't help, you need professional help. You need to protect yourself and the rest of the family, the other children, from this abusive child. Look at it now. The boy has killed his mother. This is a stigma on the family and it's a big and terrible loss. Again, another thing I want to raise on this issue eh, is that if you look at this video when they came to collect the poor woman's body, you see how all the people came out and they were crying. Just look at them. many of these people were really there for this woman? How many of these people knew what this woman was going through and were able to give her proper advice to seek professional help? Because sometimes we'll be telling people, pray, 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 take your child to this prayer house, take your child to this church. Prayers are important too. They are very important. But a child like that would have needed professional help. The mother herself would have needed professional help. How to protect herself. But she obviously did not get that from the community. Or maybe one or two people may have advised her. But who knows? Because we're very fond of always saying pray, pray, pray. But you also have to give proper advice to people to seek professional help. And it's one problem we have in our African society. Because we're always in competition. Everybody's always trying to show my child is the best, my child is doing this, my child is doing that. I don't say I'm exempted though. I'm also a parent that would jump to Facebook and say oh, my child did this, my child did that. 
but also be honest enough to tell your fellow woman about the struggles you have. When mothers come to me and say, I have this issue with my child, I tell them honestly, do you think this is a problem? See what I faced with my own child. Because when we keep lying to each other, pretending our children are angels, this parent will believe that they are alone facing this problem and they will be hiding this problem for shame. Even a lot of parents too, that have young, young children, they are very unsympathetic. When you have an older child and you are telling them, my child is this, that, they say, ah, if it's me, it can never happen in my house. I can never tolerate such a thing. I will send that child back in Africa. But watch that family a few years later. It can never happen will happen in their house. And that child will be there with them, not sent back to Africa. In fact, that child will even be doing worse than what you were experiencing in your own house. We parents in diaspora, we have to develop empathy for one another. We have to support ourselves and be telling ourselves the truth, please. Raising our children is a community work. It's not just left to every parent to raise a child. If you have experienced something with your child, let the other person know so that they can learn from it. But it's so difficult to even let another person know, see what I was experiencing with my child. Because when you do that, you see that the person you were even trying to help by telling them what your child went through or what your child did, will use this same thing to mock you and laugh about you in the community. I've even experienced a case where I went to a priest to confide, look what is with my child, pray for my child. The next thing that priest went to, go and discuss my private issue. I went to him in confidence. Went to discuss it with the whole congregation, even mocking and laughing about it on the altar. This is how we destroy ourselves. This is how the African community in diaspora is breaking apart. Because we have not learned this spirit of sisterhood, brotherhood, to be there for one another. Why are these people outside her house crying? For what? Where were they when these issues were going on? Everybody must have known about this child, must have known the problem for the parent. And I'm sure with time, the truth about this issue will still come out. Why this boy really went on to kill his mother, whether he was having mental issues or drug issues. And we'll also find out how come a man that is so educated to the level of a professor was somewhere far away and not there for his wife and his son. So I just want to leave us with this video. It's so shocking, it's so sad. This lady is just about my age. In the peak of her life, when she should be enjoying the fruit of her labor, she was cut down after all her struggles just a life wasted for nothing let us pray for the soul of gladys that her soul may find peace and that the lord will receive her soul home after such a terrible way of her life being ended and let us pray for this family in this very difficult time because they have lost not just a mother but also their son Tabo who has been arrested for murder and would have to face the consequences of what he did. 
this is going to be a very difficult and trying time for the family. And we pray that the Lord stand by them and give them the strength to heal from this terrible loss of their mother and this terrible, terrible crime that their son and brother committed. Amen.